Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We want to welcome you to our Sunday morning broadcast with Apostle David Spearman, Senior Pastor of Kingdom First here in Fort Wayne. Please feel free to share today's broadcast with as many people as you know. Also, feel free to comment if you get encouraged, blessed, or stirred up as you hear the Word of God. And use the emojis at any time to get our online activity to be heard throughout our time. If you're watching YouTube Live, display us on your smart TV for your entire family to watch. But now, let's get into this power-packed service. We want to set aside time to give you praise this morning, God. We want to set aside time to lift up our hands and worship and lift up our hands and praise God. Giving you glory and adoration for the things that you've done for us, God. For things seen and unseen on this week, God. We give you praise, God. We give you glory this morning, Lord. We magnify your name. What an awesome God we serve. Bless your name, God. Lord, we just want to give you some praise this morning. We just want to exalt your name this morning, God. You're worthy of our praise. Bless your name, God. Glory, God. The reason why I sing. The reason why I sing. And we're in all of you, God. And I'm in all of you. God, I worship you because there's none like you in all the earth. There's none like you in all the earth. For you are the sole creator of the universe. Creator of the universe. No one else can do no the things that you do for me, God. Sovereign you are. Sovereign you are. Bless your name, God. Let's all lift up our hands and sing before the Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, you are my King. And I'm
Kingdom first here are your monthly announcements for April 2020. We thank you for your continual support of ministries and missions. Our next support day is Sunday, April 26th. This Sunday has been set aside to receive a special offering to bless our partners. Our ministries, Pastors Dennis and Jacqueline Fayer, Sanctuary Gospel Center, Ypsilanti, Michigan, Bishop and Pastor Clifton Howard, Abiding Love International, Ypsilanti, Michigan, Church of God Ministries, Fishers, Indiana, Pastor Obasi Uka, Benin, Nigeria. Our missions, St. Jude's Hospital, Memphis, Tennessee, GG's Playhouse, Down Syndrome Center, Fort Wayne, Indiana, The Enough Project, Washington, D.C., Projects to End Genocide and Crimes Against Humanity, currently focused on Sudan and Congo, Parkview Cancer Institute, helping patients cover needs insurance does not cover. Members and friends, if you have a prayer request or praise report, go to prayer at kingdomfirstfw.com and send in your information. We'll be glad to pray for you or share your joy at the blessings of the Lord. After we pray, we'll forward your request for prayer to the intercessors, and they'll continue in prayer, rejoicing before the Lord till you receive the answer. That's prayer at kingdomfirstfw.com. Did you know that Kingdom First has a YouTube channel? You can go to youtube.com slash kingdom first to see any message Apostle has taught. Here's another way to get God's word in your heart and grow abundantly in your walk with Christ. You can also see mime dances and much, much more. You can also link to our website, kingdomfirstfw.com, where you may keep abreast of the daily prayer calendar as we pray for a different Kingdom First household daily and the missions and ministries we support. You may also update your member contact information or review the partner book. Or if you've been attending Kingdom First and are interested in partnership, you may complete the partnership interest form. Sign up and you are well on your way to becoming a new partner. There's something for everyone at KingdomFirstFW.com, helping one another as we partner through life together. Greetings, partners and friends from Prophetess Donna Spearman. Please join me in supporting the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society by making a donation to my fundraising campaign for Man and Woman of the Year. As you know, last year I supported Dr. Dara Spearman in her effort to raise funds to find a cure, and this was the report. The race is over and the vote has come in. Dara Spearman has won Woman of the Year, raising $109,060. Yes, you read that right. She raised $109,060. Much thanks for your support, prayers, and participation for our own Dr. Dara Spearman, LLS Woman of the Year. Job well done, Dr. Dara. In this year of 2020, I'm supporting for Man of the Year, Dr. Micah Smith. So once again, I ask you for your support. You can go to my Facebook page or to the Kingdom First Facebook page and make a donation today. As long as the scourge of cancer exists, we need to support the effort to find the cure. Thank you. Finally, we want to thank all of the partners for complying with the guidelines issued by the CDC and the Fort Wayne governmental offices. We continue to believe God for the scourge of COVID-19 to cease. We pray for the health of our healthcare workers, support staff, and all the many people on the front lines dealing with the effects of the outbreak. We also pray for those who've lost employment and dealing with many hardships. We must take the opportunity to share the good news. Crisis come and crisis go. But we always need the love of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has and shall see you through. Those have been your announcements for April 2020. Hello and welcome to Kingdom First, our video church for this Sunday. And we are so glad that you're joining us today, um, April the 19th. It is a great Sunday. And, you know, the Word of God says very simply, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor David Spearman of Kingdom First, right here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And we welcome you today to our broadcast. So without any further ado, I know there's a few things that have happened pr- prior to this, and, uh, but we're gonna go right into the message at this point in time. So let's get prepared. And our message today is, where is your hope? And the first scripture I'm gonna read to you is out of Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. And it says very simply, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So as we we look at this, and the reason I use that scripture is because I'm keenly aware of the fact that um, faith is what gives hope and assurance. It's um, the substance of your hope. But I think a lot of people, and in my estimation, 
Uh, much of the hope that we have today is, is what I might even call dangerous hope. And uh, the reason I call it a dangerous hope is because it's a hope that's not placed in God. It's hope that we place in other things and not God. And I'm going to tell you, that will always, always, always let you down. We place our hope in men or people. We place our hope in attaining a certain lifestyle. We have hope in the acquisition of material things and a house and car. We place our hope in our families, even. But these things are not designed to be a source of hope for us. But there is a hope you can have that's going to be greater than anything you can ever dream. Listen, we live in a sin-stained, broken world. And the things of this world should never be the source of, of our hope because they're all broken. Broken things can never make you happy. Sin can never make you happy. Even though people in this world pursue sin with a reckless abandon, they declare that sin is okay, that it's all right. They, they don't call it sin, obviously. We do, uh, because we know that is, is sins, transgressions, and iniquities. That's what the Bible says. But they pursue them with a reckless abandon. They pursue them because they, they, they want to gratify the flesh. They want to gratify their feelings. And in gratifying those things, many times when you do that, you're also then going contrary to what the Word of God has to say. And every human being has a choice to make in this world. And that choice is, where are we going to place our hope? Where are we going to place our trust? Who are we going to look to? As, as I said earlier, we can look to men, we can look to governmental systems, we can look to a whole lot of different things and place our hope and our trust and our faith in those things, but I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this, they will fail you. And here's the sad thing, too many people of God have placed their hope, not in Christ, but they've placed their hope in temporal things, things that will fail. Listen, even your family will fail you. And I'm not trying to downgrade anybody's family by no stretch of the imagination, but I'm letting you know that families will fail. Husbands will fail wives. Wives will fail husbands. Your children may fail you. If your hope, your everything about you is in those things, then you will be devastated. This sin-stained world, this broken world we live in, should never be the source of our hope. Because, as I said, they're all broken. Everything is broken. And all of these things can vanish in a moment. What you pursue can be gone. You can pursue material wealth, and I'm here to tell you that material wealth can vanish in a heartbeat. Look at what's happened with the stock market. How many people have uh, IRAs and all manner of saving devices that they have used and that money is there and, and normally placed in a stock market, whether you do it yourself or whether you do it with uh, a broker, whether you do it uh, uh, through, uh, uh, like I said, an IRA or whatever the case may be, a fund manager, it's all still dealing with the economy that we live in. And in the last several weeks, the last month or so, our economy has taken really a nosedive. But if your trust is in the money that you have tied up in these areas, then when, as soon as all that stuff drops, man, your heart begins to ache. You, you're going through some tribulation because now what you've placed your hope in is no longer there. It can vanish in a moment. You can, you, you can lose your lifestyle. You can lose all the material things you've gained you can lose your home, and so forth and so on. And when that happens, listen, it will be devastating because then you've lost your hope. Because you've lost your hope. And people do crazy things when they lose hope. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, but now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Listen, it says faith, hope, and love. And we're talking about, where's your hope? So hope is part of that equation. Faith, Hebrews 11:1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So you have faith, you have hope, where faith gives hope substance, and you have love. And he says the greatest of these is love, because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so when you look at these things and when you understand these things, you begin to realize and, and, and understand that God wants you to walk by faith and not by sight. 
He wants you to place your hope and your trust in him, and he wants you to walk in love. Wow. That is absolutely wonderful. Now, as I was saying, you can lose everything you have, but if your hope is not in those things, that is not as bad as if your hope is in those things. Hope is one of the, uh, the loss of hope, brother, can cause people pain, heartache. It can, it can even cause people to commit suicide, all because they've lost hope. It can easily happen when your hope is gone. It can easily happen because now you, you look and see, man, you know, what am I going to do now? How, I'm going to, how am I going to deal with these things now? How am, I, how am I going to live life? How am I going to recover? Right now, our government is real concerned about the, recover, the, the economy recovering. Doctors are saying that uh, we may be dealing with this uh, COVID-19 for the next 18 months or so before a cure or a vaccine comes along. But yet in the, in the president's office and the Congress and so forth, uh, they, they want to get the economy back going again because they understand and realize that, you know, people have got to live, people got to eat, people have to make money. But doctors are saying, well, yeah, that's fine, but we don't have a vaccine. So, you know, what, what do you do? How do you deal with that? How, how, does, how, do you, how, how do we open the economy, but yet keep people safe? Or how do we keep people safe and, and yet and still open the economy? Either way it goes, it, the, the bottom line is something has to, something's going to suffer. No doubt about it. But for the saint of God, if our hope is not in this world's economy, if our hope is not in what men, what men say and what men do, what a government does, if our hope is in Christ, then, yeah, these things may happen. And listen, bad things do happen. And bad things happen to good people. No, no, no two ways about it. But it's not about whether bad things should happen or shouldn't happen to good people. It's about how you react to the bad things that happen. What, where is your hope? Where is your trust? Sin has left this world in a terrible state of existence. And that's what we're dealing with. We're so used to it, we don't even re realize and recognize that there's something better than this. We don't even understand that God has given us a better state, a, 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 a something that's better than what the world has to offer. All we do is we walk by sight many times, and so we're looking at what the world has to offer. We're looking at, uh, uh, you know, well, if the economy is bad, what are we going to do? There was a story in the Bible. There was a great, great famine. Uh, it was so bad that, uh, you know, a donkey's head was, was very expensive. People were eating their children. That's how bad the famine was. It was terrible. And in that story, and this, this is a true event, it's a true event. It, it, the, 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 and it, it, all that happened because a, a, a foreign nation was coming against, or seized, uh, you know, coming against Israel, coming against the nation. And they had cut off all their supplies. They had cut off everything. And so now, here they are starving. And the man of God said, the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, he said, by this time tomorrow, he said, everything's going to be fine. He said everything's going to be back on, uh, uh, you know, back the prices they were before. Uh, uh, there'll be plenty. And, and the, and the uh, uh, man he told this to, the servant of the king, who he told this to, didn't believe it. And so the prophet said, well, because you won't believe it, you'll see it, but you won't partake of it. Now, that evening, there were some lepers and they said, well, let us go and, and, and go to this enemy's camp and, and pre-adventure, they may take care of us, they may feed us, they may throw us a few scraps. I mean, we're going to die anyway, so better to die. If they're going to kill us, let them kill us quickly rather than starve to death. And so they went and they went to the camp and my God, there was nobody in the camp. All this food, all, all this stuff was there, but nobody was in the camp. The camp was empty. It was like they had got up and just suddenly left. Well, God had, God had, had did a tremendous thing for them and produced a miracle to cause them to flee because they thought, they thought that the Israelites had gotten the Egyptians and others and hired them to uh, work for them and fight this invading nation 
uh, uh, you know, to fight this invading nation and come against them. And when they, and they heard a noise, and they heard such a noise, it sounded like just, you know, tens of thousands of troops that they got afraid and they got up and fled, leaving everything behind. And, and so the lepers, they kind of ate, man, they had themselves a good old party. And then they decided, wait a minute, we can't keep this to ourselves. We got to go back to, we got to go back to Israel and let everybody know what's going on. So they went back and told them what was happening and, and said, hey, everything is fine. The next day they went out there and they, they, they saw that it was true. And man, I'm telling you, people trampled and just, just went out there like crazy. And it just so happens, because of the word of the man of God, that the king's emissary, who did not believe the man of God, was trampled at the gate by the large number of people trying to get to those goods. And everything went back to normal. Listen, I, I tell you this simply because, and these stories are in the word of God, simply because God is showing us that he's in control of everything. And it can look bad. It can look like there's no way this thing can turn around. And yet, in a moment of time, God can turn things around. I'm telling you today, God will turn this around. He'll turn your paycheck around. He'll turn your bank account around. He'll turn your health around. He'll turn things around. He will turn it if you let him. But you've got to put your hope and your trust in him. You can't put your hope in a, in a sin-stained world. You can't put your hope in a world that's broken. Y'all hear what I'm saying? People are dealing with all kind of uh, 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 brokenness. They're physically broken. They, they, they're emotionally broken. They're uh, spiritually broken. In their relationships, there's brokenness. All because that's the world we live in. And we're so used to it, we think this is the way it's supposed to be. The haves blame the have-nots. And vice versa for all the problems and situations that's going. Differing political groups blame each other. The government is being blamed. The systems of the government are being blamed by the people. Different races, oh, that's a big one, blame each other for the state of things. Nations blaming each other. We call it the blame game. Everybody talks about what somebody else is doing, making things bad, but they never look at themselves. But the truth of the matter is, we are all to blame, every single one of us. That's why it behooves a nation and its people to repent. To repent before God. And right now, the talking heads on television and the news media and every place else are, are, are trying to figure out what to do. Doctors are trying to figure out what to do. But here is what we need to do. We need to repent and make God our source. Put our hope and trust in him. You see, we're, we're, we're listening to all this stuff. You know, well, it was this way back at such and such time and we made it through. And you know something, we will make it through this only because the people of God are on this planet. That's why we'll make it through. We'll make it through simply because God is going to always take care of his own. That's why we'll make it through. But we won't make it through because of the plans, the policies, and the schemes of men. We won't make it through simply because some scientist comes up with a vaccination. Praise God they do, but that's not why we're going to make it through. And how does this scientist even get his vaccination? simply because God gives him the knowledge. God gave him the wisdom, him or her. You understand where I'm coming from? You see, we won't make it based on our own ingenuity. We won't make it because we're smart. We will make it because God has mercy upon us and extends his grace to us. And it's by his mighty grace, hmm, is because of the, listen, it's because of the grace of God. Come on now. Wake up. It's because of the grace of God that we will make it through. It's because of the grace of God you haven't been infected. It's because of the grace of God toward you that you're not sick. It's because of his grace, his mercy, not because of anything you did. You didn't merit this. You did nothing to make God owe you. It's because of his grace and mercy. As I said, we are all to blame. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are all to blame. 
We think that if we can just fix the world, fix the people, fix the system, then everything will be okay. Oh, we're going to fix this. We're going we're to make this okay. We're going to take care of this. And it'll be all right because we fixed it. Ha, I'm here to tell you, sin can't fix sin. That's why Jesus had to come. He was sinless. The Lamb of God. See, sin cannot fix sin. Brokenness can't fix brokenness. Mm. If you are uh, fixing something and the tool you use to fix was broken, is broken, then you can't use a broken tool to fix a broken appliance. You can't use a broken tool. <laughs> if you're welding something, you can't use a broken welder to weld. You can't use a broken drill to drill. You can't use a broken tool to fix what's broken. Listen, we are broken. And we can't fix the brokenness of this world. We can't fix the problem that's going on here. But I know somebody who can. His name is Jesus. He can fix what's broken because he was never broken. He can fix it because he was never in sin. Tempted in all manner of ways, just as we are, but he was never in sin. See, it's no wonder we see more of a divide now than ever. Everybody's at each other's throats. This party is at, against this party. This group is against this group. We talk about the racial divide, and I hate that term race. I, I despise that term. Because see, there's only one race, and that's humanity. Because we're all the same. We're all human beings. When you begin to divide people, when you begin to say, oh, well, this one is black, this one is white, this one is, is this, and this one is that. When you get into all that and you get into racial designations, what you're doing is you're, you're setting one group up against another. That's what you're doing. I despise that term race. It's not biblical. It is not biblical. We are human beings. That's who we are. That's our race, all of us, each and every single one, every man, woman, and child. And yet, we talk about a racial divide. And here's the funny thing. No amount of laws, policies, or threats will ever heal those divides. I don't care how many laws you put on the books. People still aren't going to do what's right. Am I right? Come on, that's true. Might as well say amen, Pastor. No matter how many policies are written, it's not going to change people's hearts. See, because we need to have a heart transformation, a heart change. We need to be made different. And that difference is not based on, that di the, the difference we need to be made is not going to come from laws. It's not going to come from policies. It's not going to come from threats even. It's going to come because we surrender ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we put our hope and our trust in him. We think we can make everything okay, but we can't. There's no, way, no two ways about it. We, we're not able to. Uh, and how, what's my proof? Look at us. What's my proof? Look at us, historically. Go all the way back in history. Look at us. We can't fix anything. We haven't fixed anything for thousands of years. And we still can't fix it. We're broken, full of sin, and we cannot fix ourselves. The Bible declares, and, and, and it, it really does show us honestly our own situation, our sinful state. As you read the Bible, it shows you. See, that's what I love about the Word of God. It pulls no punches. It's a great diagnostic tool. It shows you exactly what's wrong with us. Most of us, especially those of us saints, we think that we're wiser and, and more sanctified than we really are. And I'm not trying to put you down or put it, myself down or anybody else down, but let's be real. We're not as wise as we think. James said, if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives liberally and doesn't upbraid or doesn't get mad at you because you ask. 
And that's great, and that's true. Absolutely. You want wisdom? Ask of God. He will give you wisdom. I've seen it time and time again. I've asked God for wisdom, and he's given it to me. Yes, it works. But listen, don't get on a high horse, buddy. Don't begin to think of yourself more highly than you ought. Understand and recognize God gives you wisdom, but we take it to the next level sometimes. We're not humble about it. We don't stop and recognize that any wisdom, any understanding that I have all comes from God. Not from me. Not because I'm great. Not because I have a high IQ. Not because I can put words together in a sentence and, 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 and they sound very well and good. And, and man, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm very good. Listen, anything that you're able to do, whether it's being a musician, whether it's being able to write, whether it's being a scientist, anything you're able to do, it is only because of the grace of God. He has given you that ability. He has given you that wisdom. He has given you that understanding. He has given you that knowledge. He has given it to you. Be humble and recognize the source of what you have. And give honor and glory to the source, God. We think that we're more sanctified than we really are. Oh, yes, I'm saying. Listen, when I look into the mirror of the word of God, I see who I really am. I see what manner of man I am. I'm not like as, as, as uh, 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 James says, uh, or I think as Paul says, you know, I look into a mirror and then I forget what manner of man I am. Uh-uh. I, the mirror is the word of God. You look in that mirror, I'm telling you, you'll know what you really are if you really look and understand and allow the word of God to penetrate your heart. You'll see what manner of person you are. The greatest problem we have in life is, is not what is going on outside, but what exists inside. We think the greatest problem, the world thinks the greatest problem is, man, if we only had this type of, of governmental system, if we only had communism, if we only had socialism, some say if we only had capitalism, if we only had this, if we only had that, if we only had these things, then everything would be all right. And everything, one of those promises you the sun, moon, and stars. They promise you that everything, you, hey, if you go along with this system, everything's going to be wonderful. Everybody's going to have. There won't be any have-nots. Everybody's going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, eat and, and, you know, enjoy life, so forth and so on. But yet the truth of the matter is in every single one of those systems, every single one, bar none, every single one, it always ends up there are those who have and there are those who don't have. It always ends up somebody takes advantage because that's the nature of man. That's the nature of man. I only know of one system, one system, wherein everybody receives. And that's God's system, the kingdom of God. And he shows us in his word how we are to, what we are to do in order to receive. Give and it shall be given unto you. Mm. How about that? Give and it shall be given unto you. Over Malachi, God says, you robbed me in tithe and offering. He says, but don't rob me. Give that my house may be full. In other words, that there may be a word in my house. Give. He said, now open up the windows of heaven. God gives you the principle for receiving. It's giving. But every system of man, the principle they use is taking. 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 I'm going to take every system. I don't care if it's capitalism. I don't care if it's communism. I don't care if it's socialism. Whatever ism it is. Their systems are all about taking. God's system is all about giving. An entirely different type of system. And that's the only system where everybody can be blessed and enjoy and have a wonderful life. The problem is not out there. Saints, the problem is in here. My biggest problem is moral. It's a moral problem. There's something wrong inside of me and inside of you. And what's wrong in me is sin. And it influences everything I do. Everything. Now you may say, Pastor, but, 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 but you know, I, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. 
yes, that's true. But you still have a body of flesh that has not been redeemed. It is still very much sinful. It still has influence. You are still fighting a battle each and every day to either serve God that day or you're going to serve sin, the law of sin and death that day. That battle wages in each of us every single day. For the person without Christ, there's not even a battle. They, they're, they're a slave to sin. For the saint of God, we're fighting a battle. We're in a war. Are you willing to wage war so that you can win that battle and serve God? See, thank God I have a hope. Regardless of how, what's going on inside me, I have a hope. I'm more than just a sinner. I'm a child of God through his grace. What does grace mean? Unmerited favor. Favor I didn't deserve. Favor I didn't earn. Favor I don't merit. I am a child of God through his grace. I have hope. And my hope is not in anything in this world. My hope is not in a car or in a home or in material possessions. My hope is not in a job. My hope is not in a career. My hope is not in the stock market or the governmental system. My hope is not in whether I'm black or white or whatever. That's not white privilege and all that. Business. That's not where my hope is. My hope is in Christ Jesus. And that's the hope you have to have. The Bible says, very simply, in 1 Peter 1, 21, who through him, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and your hope, uh-oh, let me read that again. Who through him are believers in God, talking about you and me, who raised him from the dead, talking about God raised Jesus from the dead, and gave him glory, said that your faith and hope are in God. That's where your faith and your hope has to be, in God. Because if it's not, and it's in, in anything in this world, then I'm telling you, you're going to be devastated. Because when it all goes away, and it will, it will, when it all goes away, you're going to say, what in the world, what am I going to do? I, I, I've lost it all. You know, during the beginning of the Great Depression, the stock market crash in 1929, it's said that the people who lost so much money, many Wall Street guys and so forth, they, they, they leapt to their death because their hope was in their portfolio. And when your hope is in your portfolio, when it goes, and here again, it will go. It will go. Then what do you have left? You have no hope. But God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Your hope can always be in him. Psalms 31, 24 says, Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. Uh, boy, I tell you what, that's awesome stuff. This is the beauty of it. Here it is. God reached down into this wretched world through his son Jesus, and he transformed us from sinners into what we are becoming, which is the image of Christ. See, we're becoming that image each and every day as we focus on the word of God, focus on the things of God, and do not allow ourselves, never allow ourselves to put our hope and our trust in the things of the world. Therefore, my hope has to be in the eternal God because he'll never let me down. As we read in the, read in the start, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It gives our hope substance. And so as I take my faith and, and, and my hope is in God and, I, and, and my faith gives my hope that's in God substance, something to hold on to, something to grab hold to, it allows my faith, I mean, excuse me, my hope to be real to me. We don't see God with our eyes. You may not even have a feeling 
in your body. You don't have to feel anything, but what you have to have is faith. Faith that says, I believe God, and I believe everything he has said. And his word shows me that I am a man most miserable, and therefore I need to come to him humbly, accepting his son Jesus, who he sent to die for me, so that I could be free. See, when I have my hope in God, it's because I have my hope in God, I'm able to live this life above the fray. If it all falls down around us, we're still standing as saints of God. See, I no longer see life from the perspective of sin in this world. And I think that's important for us to understand. See, a lot of us see life from the perspective of sin and of this world. We get all caught up and, and, and twisted up concerning what the, what the media says. And man, I'm telling you, the media will keep you twisted. Man, they'll keep your, your gut in a knot. They'll keep your mind fr fr uh, afraid and frenzied, and you'll, be, you'll wonder, what in the world? Well, you know, well, why don't somebody do something? Why doesn't somebody do, do this? Why doesn't somebody do that? And the media, you know, come on, it's, it's men who run the media. So they report what they want to report. They report what they choose to report. Have you ever noticed they don't report good news? They don't report anything about Jesus and, and what, what's going on in the churches and how unless something bad happens in the church and all of a sudden the church gets all kind of press. But they never report how many people accepted Christ. They never report the miracles and the healings that God is doing all around this world. And trust me, there are thousands, tens of thousands of healings being done every day around this world. They never report that. They never report the greatness of God, the glory of God, the holiness of God. They never report those things. What they report to you is a crisis here and a crisis there. And every day, there's a new crisis. And when they run the course of that crisis, there's another crisis. There's always something to keep your mind in a frenzy, to keep you from finally settling down and realizing that God is God and that he is in control. They want to keep you shook up. They want to keep you angry. They want to keep you at odds with other people. That's their job. That's what they want to do. I don't want to see life through that perspective. I don't want to look at life the way they tell me to look at life. I don't want to look at, at, at my family that way. See, now, because I'm saved, I love Jesus. He's my Lord and Savior. My hope and my trust is in him. I see life now from the perspective of the kingdom of God. I see it from the perspective of eternity, not this temporary world. Let the world tell it, we're going to all die in the next couple of years. You know, isn't that what some of them have said, the climate change? We got only 12 years, now 10 years now, or 11 years, I guess now. They said it last year. So now we only have 11 years. And humanity will see, scientists have even said it. All manner of people have said it. But let me tell you, it's not over until God declares it's over. It's not over until God declares it's over. They said, oh, we got to do all these things to fix it. We've got to, you've got to give up all these things to, to, so we can fix the planet. We can't fix it. We can't make it better. I'm not saying we shouldn't do right. We should not, we, we should, we should uh, strive to, to, you know, live above and not beneath, to be the head, not the tail. We should strive to make sure that we treat, you know, animals and everything else properly. I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. Yes, we should. But we can't fix this because when God says it's enough, it's going to be enough. But only when he says so. We can't even destroy this thing. Despite all the nuclear weaponry that's, that's, that's in the world, we can't destroy this because God won't allow it. It will not be destroyed until he decides to destroy it. Not before. When he decides. See, when you see things from eternity's standpoint, from through the eyes of the kingdom of God, when you see things that way, then you begin to realize that everything that men are saying is just a bunch of talk. The only thing that matters and the only thing that's important is what God has said. How about that? Can you get with that? 
I'm not going to allow myself to get caught up in all that the world says. I'm not going to allow myself to get caught up in all this stuff and, and get, get concerned because my vision is an eternal vision now. I see it from an eternal standpoint. I see the long game, not the short game. Looking at these things from God's perspective enables us to know what to do in this world, how to live. Because, you see, our hope is in Christ. So that hope in Christ produces in us insight. It produces courage. It enables us to know how to live in this world when everybody is talking doom and gloom. We're able to say, yeah, for you it might be doom and gloom. But for us, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Here again, not to say that we won't go through some stuff. Not to say that bad things don't happen to good people. But our sight, how we view things, our hope is in Christ. And so we see with his eyes and we get his insight. We have his courage. We have his authority. Glory to God. We have his authority. So that what could come and try and dismantle our lives is not going to be able to. Wow. What could come and, and, and destroy us, it can't destroy us. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 6 that we take the shield of faith that quenches all the fiery darts of the devil. It quenches all the fiery darts. The devil is shooting darts at you, but you have a shield of faith. Faith, remember? Hope, love, faith, hope, love. That shield of faith, that faith which gives your hope purpose what sustains your hope, gives your hope something, gives you something to grab hold to in your hope. That shield of faith quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Glory to God. And enables you to see what others can't see. It enables you to live in this world when others aren't able to. It enables you to, to do things that others can't do because you have authority. You have insight. You have courage because of your hope in Christ. The Bible says in, uh, what's that scripture? Ah, 1 Corinthians 15, 25 and 26. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Listen, Jesus is in control. He's reigning right now. This is what 1 Corinthians 15 is saying. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that will be abolished is death. Glory to God. Jesus is in control. Even in the midst of coronavirus, COVID-19, Jesus is in control. I'm telling you, he, is, he reigns. And he reigns supreme. We say, Pastor, why didn't he fix all this? Listen, evil is in the process of being defeated. Even death will eventually die. Even death. There's a reason for hope. Even when everything is falling apart. When life has dealt you a crushing blow. Our hope is found where? In the empty tomb. It guarantees us that the promises of God are real are true and that those promises are for you it's a hope that will never shame you it's a hope that will never put you down there's coming a day of no more suffering no more pain no more tears no more injustice no more betrayal listen your hope will not and is not in vain because we walk by faith in God and not by sight. That's what it says in Corinthians 5, 7. Can you say it with me? For we walk by faith and not by sight. Come on, say it again. Shout it in your home. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Where is your hope? In Christ Jesus. That's where my hope is. And that's where your hope has to be. Otherwise, you are a person most pitiful. But you don't have to be. You don't have to be. Quit looking at the world. 
and begin to look at Jesus. Quit looking at the things that's going on and allowing yourself to be tossed to and fro by the media and, and every other group. Just don't allow it to happen to you anymore. Quit. Just stop. If it means you have to stop reading the paper, stop looking at your, at your, your, your phone and looking at all the news feeds. If, if, if you have to, then stop. Well, how do I know what's going on in the world? Listen, it's the same old stuff day after day. It's the same crisis just with another name, painted a different color. That's all it is. Just stop and focus in on Jesus. Let the word of God be your news feed. Let the word of God be your news feed. Amen? Amen. God bless you so much, saints. We love you. We are so thankful that you were with us today and uh, look forward to us uh, throughout the week. We'll have a couple of uh, feeds uh, or different um, messages, short messages that we'll also put out this week. Uh, but we are just so grateful to God that he's preserved you, kept you, that you are under the wing of the Almighty and no plague should come nigh your dwelling. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your name today. You are an awesome and mighty God. Our hope is in you. Our hope is in that empty tomb because Jesus is not there. He sits on the right hand of majesty where he lives to make intercession on our behalf. Thank you, Lord, that we have an intercessor. Thank you, Lord, that we have somebody who speaks for us. And you listen and you grant our request. You protect us. You're always there for us. You give us the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that we need. Father, in Jesus' name, heal those who might be sick or, 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 or going through any type of situation, whether it's COVID-19 or anything else. Heal their bodies in the name of Jesus because your word says, by his stripes, we were healed. And if we were, that means we are. So they are healed in Jesus' name. If you have a suffering a bad back, in Jesus' name, you are healed. If, if you're suffering migraines, in the name of Jesus, you are healed. Somebody is watching it that has or has a relative that has COVID-19. We agree. I'll agree with you right now. Just reach your hand out and we agree together that they are healed in Jesus' name. They are healed in Jesus' name. As a point of contact, whether you're watching this on your cell phone, your computer, your television, just touch the screen. Just touch it. And as a point of contact, we agree together. They are healed. We agree together that whatever your problem is, you are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed and made whole by the power of Almighty God. And we release that healing into your life. Somebody's suffering a major back problem right now in the lower part of their back. Somebody else has one that's in the upper part, but someone has one in the lower part of their back. In Jesus' name, you are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. See, he died for your healing. He took those stripes on his back for your healing. Yes, he did. And you are made whole. We thank you, Father. And we give you glory and honor. Because you're a mighty God. In Jesus' name, our hope is in you. Amen and amen. Remember these words from 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. God loves you. And we'll see you next time. We are grateful you chose to join us today for Pastor Dave's teaching. If you have questions during the week or are in need of prayer, please email us at office at kingdomfirstfw.com and be sure to join us for our next broadcast. During this time, please remember to be safe, be well, and be blessed.